more time. How are you? <laughs> all right, so when all else fails, you just go back to the standard, you know? You just go back to the way things were before. Let me see if I can. The only thing here is that I cannot figure out. Oh, okay, there we go. There's Sharon. I know we're good. Sharon's here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for being patient. It's just, you know, I told you, yeah, you're right, Laura. Third time is a charm. It's it's this new program, and I had not been having any problems with it, but, you know, I guess it's better to, to trial by fire, I guess is the way you would put it. Just got to see what happens, and when things go wrong, we, we just handle it. That's the way we are. So, I don't have any extra pictures and fun, beautiful graphics for you guys, but that's okay, because I do have a project, and that's what you're here for anyway. So... Let's get on with that. So, all right, third time's a charm. I know some of you, this will be the third time hearing it, but that's okay. So, working with the beautiful Swarovski in Peridot. And since we've already kind of been through that spill twice, let's go straight down to it and let's talk more about these beads because I feel like we get to the beads and it's like, then they're taken away and all right. So, let me see if I remember how to do this just with one camera. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to flip you guys around and ta-da, just like normal. All right, so let's just pick up where we left off. I had just opened up the mini mix with the Peridot Swarovski. Hi, hi, hi. Anita says, hi, that's so much better. It is so much better. The only issue here is just the lighting, but, you know, we'll work it out. All right. So if we need more light, just, I can definitely try to work that out, but I think it's all right. Okay, so I had just opened the, um, just like I said, this mini mix, and this was the bottom, no, we were talking about the top tier, because it has all of this beautiful Swarovski in it, and we've got the bicones, we have these really awesome two terminal beads, it's this bar shape with the two holes in it the hearts, and then this leaf shape. And I think this is where everything started to just really go downhill. <laughs> so I wanted to show these to you guys one more time. Hopefully, since they're not choppy now, you can really kind of appreciate the beauty of this bead. It's that beautiful leaf shape, and it has the facets. It has the hole up here at the top, so you would treat it like a top-drilled bead. And it's really just a stunning bead and I think really what makes it so beautiful is the facets that are in it. So when you get your package, the little mini mix, you're gonna you're gonna be like totally wowed because it never really comes across on camera as good as it is in real life, of course. All right, so then on the bottom level, we've got a little mix of all kinds of other goodies, which I think is really cool because speaking of that leaf shape that was in that top tier, there are some little leaf beads that are in this bottom tier. So clearly we were on the same page or I was on the same page with our amazing bead designers that put together these mixes over at Jesse James Beads because it does, it just really, they are definitely a leaf shape and this beautiful green color is very reminiscent of um, growth and you know, all things green and growing. You've got some really cool antique brass spacers. This is one of the spacers that I really, really love. I don't know anywhere else where you can get the really cool square spacers. This is like, to me, this is becoming one of those Jesse James signature beads. Um, I know it's just a tiny little guy, but it's a square spacer and I don't know. I've never seen these anywhere else. I know that they exist. I mean, you know, it's not like <laughs> these just came out of the heavens and dropped down into Sarah James's lap. Of course, I don't know. That might have happened, but <laughs> this just tiny little guy, I don't know. I just really, really love it. I love the way that when you string this up, the way it looks. So if you've never worked with those little square spacers, I highly recommend taking them out on the road, so to speak, because they're really cool. And I just, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like they're very different, but work beautifully in your designs. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this strand apart 
because this is what we're gonna use. Well, we're gonna use a little bit of both, but we're gonna use some of these two terminal, the two whole beads that are in this mix, or in this strand, rather, to create our earrings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take them all off the strand. So we've got this really cool shape, this like big diamond guy, but it's rounded, it's really cool. Squares are magic. Kelly, I agree with you. And here are some more squares. These are the two whole squares. Really, really cool. All right, so then we also have these little guys. We've got some more of the bicone beads and then these really tiny little rondelles and some of these cone-shaped beads. We're gonna utilize quite a few of these in our design. And what kind of wire are we gonna use? Well, let's talk about it because that's important, right? So we are using some artistic wire, and this is by the three, and not B-Y, but B-U-Y, as in by all three of them at once. We're using 20 gauge. You've got this cool little three pack. You can get this over on jessiejamesbeads.com and pick this up. I think this is a really cool kind of starter pack if you've never used artistic wire before, or if you've not used any of the different colors other than silver, this is a good way to get a small amount of it. And I say small, but really and truly, there's a lot, like three yards. That's a lot of wire to work with. That's several pairs of earrings, if you're being honest about it. But it comes in the tarnish resistant silver. You've also got the tarnish resistant brass, and you've got this really cool hematite color on the bottom. We're gonna use the hematite color on the bottom we are gonna use some of the silver color for the ear wires. We're gonna make our ear wires today, but the, um, the main part of the earrings, we're gonna use this hematite color with. So anyway, check this out. Um, if you're looking to buy some more wire, this is a really good buy. There's plenty of wire here. There's, you know, if you use more of the silver than you do of the brass, you know, it, it works out. It's better than buying a great big, huge bulk particularly if you want to throw this in your in your bag. I love it. This that, and that's exactly what I do with mine. I throw mine in my work bag so that I always have these little spools of wire. So, take the little hematite one out and show it to you. You can see I've already used quite a bit of this, but there's still a ton left. And when I say I've used quite a bit of it, like I really have used a lot. So, you are getting quite a bit of wire. The hematite all on its own has, you know, you know what hematite looks like. It's that very metallic-y kind of dark silver gray situation. I don't really know how you would explain it because it's not black. But when you mix this hematite with these peridot beads, all of a sudden that hematite becomes this like magical blue color. It's really weird. So if you are mixing the two together, you're gonna to be stunned with the end result. I was, in fact, Sarah is the one, Sarah James mentioned, why don't we make these earrings in the hematite color? And that's not necessarily a color combination that I would have picked to put the hematite together with the peridot, but when I did and I created the whole earring, I was shocked. Like the that combination, it's just stunning. It really, really is. And we're making a really kind of interesting, um, very boutique-esque kind of earrings. So let's get started with them because I've done a lot of talking. Let's get to the project. So I've cut about six inches is all you need. I've cut more like eight because, you know, I'm crazy like that. Um, two pieces of the hematite wire, okay? And we're just gonna start with one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a spiral at the very, very end. And we're actually gonna use chain nose pliers for this, which I know seems kind of counterintuitive. You would think that your round nose pliers would be the starting point for this, but it's really not. You can, but I find that using your chain nose pliers for this just makes it a little bit easier. So to get your spiral started, we're gonna grab that wire just right at the very, very tip and at the very tip of the pliers. You don't want to come back here. You wanna stay right at the very, very tip because we're gonna make the tiniest little turn in our wire. Just a teeny beeny little hook, okay? And we want to, I probably shouldn't have taken my pliers out. We want to actually make this a little baby loop just a tiny, tiny one. And let's see, 
I just want to close him up. That's pretty close. He's not completely closed, but this is a good start. Okay, so you want to start with a little tiny hook. And you're only going to get that shape with your chain nose pliers. Your round nose pliers, you're going to get more of a round shape, but it also tends to create more of an oval. And you'll see what I mean as we are going. Okay, so now the next step of this is to take that tiny little hook and put it into the jaw of your pliers. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but you see that tiny little piece of the hook that's sticking out right there. That gives you an indication of how far that is laying on the inside of the pliers, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna guide the wire. You can see just barely, I'm taking really slow movements, okay? Putting it into the pliers, bending the wire, opening the pliers and you can see I'm starting to create a shape here so it's a really slow kind of process if you guys remember the um, the Christmas trees that we did with the Christmas in July project this is very similar to that so you place your rounded piece of wire into the jaw of pliers and then guide the wire with your fingers okay and just small movements you can see the spiral has started open the pliers, close them down on that, and try again. Well, not try again, it is again. <laughs> there is no try, there is only do. And you just want to keep doing that. So you are really opening and closing your pliers and guiding the wire into a spiral shape, just with the very smallest of movements, okay? So we're just going to keep going and as we as we work our way around the spiral is going to build itself up okay now if you are concerned with marking up the metal and you can see that I actually am kind of marking the metal up just a tiny tiny bit it doesn't bother me but if it bothers you you can always use your nylon jaw pliers for this as well grab that and you're just going to do the exact same thing and you don't have to worry about creating any marks on the metal but you don't want to start with this guy you definitely want to go around at least once or twice before you know with your regular chain nose pliers before you bring in your nylon jaw pliers just because the way that the jaw on these is shaped it's just kind of awkward to hold on to so you want to be sure you've got a good substantial little little sphere circle thing going on before you bring those in all right, so Robin says that she is watching and trying to make Rice Krispie treats out of marshmallows and fruity pebbles. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Can I come over? <laughs> Why are we making jewelry? Let's eat Rice Krispie treats. Okay. <laughs> So we've made a little bit of a spiral here and I don't have an exact measurement on this guy, but I'm gonna bring in the ruler just to kind of give you an idea of the size of this. So it's a little over a fourth of an inch from one side to the other, okay? Maybe just, mm, yeah. So we're not quite at a half an inch. We're right around a fourth of an inch. So that's really the kind of size that we wanna stick to party at Robin's house that's right <laughs> and any bigger than that you're gonna need a longer piece of wire okay so I only really allotted in my measurement for a spiral this size now before I move on I do want to bring in my block and this part is not completely necessary but it's better in my opinion to be safe than sorry so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place that spiral down on my block and I am going to hit it with a nylon hammer just to work harden it a little bit. I'm just gonna tap on it. I'm not doing anything crazy. Then I wanna flip it over and tap on it from the other side. So I'm work hardening it and I'm also making sure that I'm making it nice and flat because the spiral will have a tendency to want to sink in on one side. So if you will hit it with your nylon hammer on both sides, it will not do that anymore, okay? 
All right, so Barbara has a question. Barbara says, do you recommend, recommend that dipping stuff for your pliers? Not sure what it's called. So I, Barbara, have never used it. I know exactly what you're talking about and I don't remember what it's called either, but I have heard good things about it. So do I give it my stamp of approval? I really can't because I've never used it, but I've not ever heard anybody say that it didn't work. So it's definitely worth a try. I don't even know where you would buy it. Um, just basically because I don't know what it's called, so it'd be kind of hard to look for it, but I would imagine that it's relatively inexpensive. Um, but there is something else that you can do before we move on, because this is a good little tip just to kind of have on hand. Now, you may not have access to this um, as readily as I do, but um, you can grab this stuff for like on the super, super cheap. I use airline tubing. So my son and my husband are obsessed with aquariums, other than Halloween, our, the next obsession is aquariums. I do not share this obsession, okay? I'm not, I like to look at an aquarium, but I'm not all about, you know, all of that. They are very, very serious about it. So I have airline tubing that is um, all over the place <laughs> and in various sizes. And sometimes I will take a piece of airline, I'll take two, two small clips, I'll just cut it, in about a half of an inch shape, you know, two pieces of airline tubing and stick it over the top of my pliers and then use it. And it's just temporary. Like when you're done, you just take them off and sit them to the side. So, you know, that's just if you happen to have some in your garage or for whatever, maybe you have an aquarium. But if you're looking for something that's cheap and inexpensive and you can, you know, just pop on there and then pop them right off, the airline tubing works. So just a handy little tip. All right. So we've got our spiral and you can see the direction that our wire is going. We need this wire to come up at an angle. So I'm gonna grab that wire right there, okay? And I'm gonna bend it 90 degrees. Okay, so now when I take it off of the pliers, it looks sort of like a lollipop, okay? The wire is going in the direction that I want it to so that the spiral is gonna hang nicely, just like so, okay? All right, so now Let's do a second one because there are two of these and it's good to see this more than once, you know? I mean, it's just practice makes perfect, right? And I have to have a second one anyway, so you don't really have much of a choice. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking a second piece of that wire, 20 gauge, the hematite color, it's artistic wire, and grabbing it right at the tip with my chain nose pliers, okay? And I'm just gonna create a little hook in the wire just like so, okay? Put my pliers back in there and try to close that hook up. It's okay if you don't. It's not super, super necessary, but get as close as you can. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that. That's a, good, that's a good little hook amount. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that little hook and place it in the jaw of my pliers down here in the middle so that I've got enough surface area to hold on to that. And just very gently, I'm going to move that wire. Jeannie says painter's tape works also. You know, you are absolutely right. Painter's tape is like, if you work with wire, painter's tape is a must. I have several rolls of it in different sizes. I use it for all kinds of things because it doesn't leave that sticky residue behind. All right, so there's that, the beginnings of our little spiral. I'm just going to work this around just like we did before until I've got a good little bit. So I've got a nice little little part started. I'm gonna bring in the nylon jaw pliers to continue my spiral, just to not mark up the metal. But I did need to get at least this much, okay? Because it's, it's harder to hold on to otherwise. So I'm just gonna continue creating my spiral shape. And we're just gonna work that up. Now, making the spiral, I know I make this look easy, but I've, I've made a bunch of these, okay? If you are brand new at wire working or you've never made a spiral before, don't get frustrated. Be patient, be gracious with yourself because it does take a little bit of, a, little bit of practice, I'm not gonna lie. 
the first few that you make are not going to be nice and round. They're going to be funny shaped, and that's okay. You know, you got to make a couple of funny ones before you get a good one. And every now and then, I make one that looks absolutely ridiculous. So, you're not alone. All right, so now I just want to double check to make sure that it's the same size as the other one. And this one is very, very close. Okay, so same thing. I want to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to place it right next to where the wire is coming out of the spiral. And then I'm going to bend so that I've got this nice 90 degree angle here. Okay, so now when I hold these together, they look very, very similar. Okay, they don't have to be perfect, but we do want them to look pretty close to each other. Okay. All right, so now let's start working up the earring because this is the this is the easy part, okay? We're gonna string this, or we're gonna thread, rather, our beads on, and we're gonna use both pieces of wire because we are using these beads that have two holes in them. But to get started, we're gonna start with these little, I don't know what you would call these guys. They're super, super cute. This little oval kind of tubey looking bead that's on the bottom tier of that um, Swarovski mini mix. We're gonna thread that guy on to each one of these, to each piece of the wire. Oh, I didn't harden it, you are right. Thank you for reminding me. Now I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> so we'll harden both of them just to be sure. Thank you, thank you, I completely forgot. So I'm just gonna put it down on my block just like we did with the first one. I'm just gonna tap it with my nylon hammer. I love it, thank you, Connie. I would have completely forgotten. And now I'm gonna spin it over, just flip it over and do the same thing. Okay, and now because I don't remember which one was which, we're gonna do the other one too, <laughs> just for good measure. Doesn't take a lot, you just want to make sure that it's gonna keep that shape. And make sure that it's not gonna sink in on one, on one side or the other, okay? All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so back to the beads. We've added these two really beautiful light green beads that have that awesome facet on them. And now we are going to add one of the beads from the strand. We're gonna add this diamond shaped bead. It's very rounded, but it is a diamond shape and you can see it has the two terminals in it. So we're gonna thread it on to both pieces of wire and just bring that down, okay? And now we're gonna thread on two of these little tiny rondelles that were also on the strand. They are the same kind of milky green color that these beads on the bottom are, so we're really making sure to incorporate all of the, um, the same finishes and colors on the beads, just so that everything makes sense visually. Okay, so just bringing that milky color further up into the design. All right, so there are those guys. And last but not least, we're gonna thread on one of these bar-shaped beads that I absolutely love. And we're gonna thread that on to both as well. Okay, just drop that down. All right, so now you've got your beads, you've got your little spirals down here at the bottom. I like my spirals to go in the same direction. It's up to you. Um, one thing I will mention is that when we're working on the top of the wire up here, it is going to, um, they probably will spin on you, but we can always turn them back the way we want them to go. So it's not a problem, okay? They're gonna do what they want for now. So to work out the top of this, We've got two wires, we need to get down to just one wire. And to do that, I'm gonna take my hand, my non-dominant hand, and I'm gonna hold all of these beads. But I wanna be sure that as I'm grabbing the beads, I'm also kind of pushing down on them to make sure that they are right up against the spirals, okay? I don't want there to be any extra room. I want them both to be right on the very top of the spirals. And you can see with my pinky, or not my pinky finger, but my round, or my, my goodness, my ring finger, I'm kind of pushing up on the spirals, down with my forefinger and my thumb, just to hold everything in the space that I want it to. I don't want any of this to move, okay? So, I'm gonna take these two wires and I'm gonna cross them 
at the top, just like that. Okay, there's nothing, nothing technical, just crisscrossed at the very top. There is a little bit of space there in between. That's what we want. Now I'm gonna turn it this direction so you guys can see. I'm gonna pick one of these wires. It really makes no difference which one, but I'm gonna grab it right at the top of the crisscross with my chain nose pliers. Uh-oh, make sure I'm holding everything straight. And then I'm gonna give it a bend, okay? It's got a sharp bend in it now, you can see, right? Now I wanna take this one and right where that bend is, I wanna give that one kind of a sharp bend as well, except it's going this way, okay? It's really important that you make those bends because if you don't and you just let the wire lay naturally where you crisscrossed it, you're not going to get your wire wrapping at the, at the top. It's gonna to be more off-centered, okay? So just keep that in mind. Those two tiny little movements in the wire, those were really, really necessary, as small as they seem. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with another pair of chain nose pliers. I'm using bent. You don't have to. And I'm going to grab that wire, both parts, if I can get my pliers in there. Grab both of those wires underneath. Oh, no. It is kind of awkward. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I'm going to grab both wires, holding them in the jaws of my pliers. Okay. And then I'm gonna switch hands. And now I'm gonna take, it would probably make more sense. Well, it, uh, yeah, let me forget the chain or the bent chain nails. Let's just use these because this is easier. All right, so just regular chain nails pliers. They're, the surface area here is smaller so I can really grab a hold of the wires. I've got the two wires going this way. The one that is bent coming down, this is the one you're gonna take and you're gonna wire wrap around that, that straight wire about one and a half okay so you've got one and a half wraps now unfortunately I marked up my wire where I was uh, moving the pliers around and changing the pliers out um, normally that would not have happened but because I was trying to decide which pliers I wanted to go with I did mark up the wire so if that happens to you you can flip this around, and that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna flip it around. Make that marked section, put that on the back. Nobody will ever know, okay? All right, so now, all I'm gonna do is I've got this long piece of wire here, and yours will be shorter, because I cut way more wire than I needed, um, but I'm gonna trim this off. I don't need it. We're done with that. Now we're just down to this one singular piece of wire, and that's exactly what we want. I am, however, going to Make sure that that end is not sticking up. You can see it just a little bit. I'll work on that some more. You see that little piece that's sticking out? I'm gonna work on that more in a minute. All right, so the next step is just basic wire wrapped loop. So I'm gonna grab the wire, just that single piece of wire now, right above the two little wraps or the wrap and a half that we did, and I'm gonna bend 90 degrees, okay? Move everything out of the way here. And now I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and put them right there, holding that wire so that it's running between the barrel of the pliers. And now I'm gonna go up and over, okay? And I'm gonna adjust my grip just a bit to go ahead and bring that wire on around. So I've got a nice loop. And now I'm gonna wire wrap to fill this space between the last wrap that we did here and our loop. So I'm gonna put this back on the pliers and I'm gonna switch hands. And you can use your fingers here if you want to. I like to use chain nose pliers, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab that wire with my chain nose pliers and just wrap on around. And I just, I'm gonna use my fingers. <laughs> I've got, the tripod is like right here, so it's kind of hard to hold those pliers. So I am gonna use my fingers, but um, you just wanna make your wraps meet up with the wraps that you already did, okay? Now, this is another one of those things that takes a little bit of practice. Um, I don't, I never expect this situation to be perfect. And let me, let me take it off so I can show it to you. The reason that it's not gonna be perfect is because 
one of your wires is going one direction and, and the other wire is going the other direction. So when they meet up, sometimes there tends to be a little tiny bit of space there. It's okay. Nobody's going to notice that. If they're that close to you, you need to tell them to back off. <laughs> I mean, really. So you want it to line up and be seamless, but it's not going to happen every single time. And it may happen on one earring and not on the other. It's really, it's totally okay. So don't stress about something like that. Um, if you practice it, you'll figure out exactly how to get it all nice and lined up. But to me, it's never been something that I've ever really stressed about. So I get it as good as it'll go. And I just say, okay, I'm good. I'm good with it. I'm just going to trim off the tail on the back. And then I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit with my pliers just so that the wires lay as nicely as they can and it looks as seamless as possible. If you get really close to that, you're going to tell that it's you can tell that it's not, but I'm telling you, nobody is going to be that close to your earrings. All right. So, now notice down here at the bottom my spirals have worked out of the shape that I wanted them to well, not really the shape, but they're going in opposite directions. And I don't want that. So, what I'm going to do is very very carefully holding all the beads in one hand and I'm just gonna turn with my fingers slow gentle movement and twist that wire so that it is going in the same direction as the other one okay and this artistic wire is very soft and pliable so you can really kind of guide the earring back into the shape that you want Okay, it's very forgiving. If things are not quite right, just give it a little bit of squeezing and moving. Just make gentle movements. Yes, so to eliminate the gap, you can add a bead in between both wraps. You absolutely can. Um, that is a really good way to avoid it. If you um, are not comfortable with the way that it looks, you definitely can add a tiny bead in between here. Uh, one of these little rondelles would have been perfect to go in between the wraps. Um, definitely yes that is a really really good tip thank you for that okay so we have the earring now I don't know about you but this looks like to me something that you would find in a boutique this is a very unique design it's very different I can promise you that not anybody else <laughs> unless you are watching this video and working along nobody else is gonna have a pair of earrings that looks like this and I love that you know sometimes it's fun to have something creative and different and you know so we're almost done we've got two more things that we're gonna do we're gonna add two of these little cone beads down here to the bottom just to add some movement to this because I feel like this is a very stiff earring you know it's all made on wire on you know half hard wire so it's very stiff so I want to add some movement to this this step is completely optional you don't have to do this part if you don't want to but I like to have the extra little movement so what I'm going to do is I am going to create two little head pins using that technique where we create the knot. I've already done one of them. I'm going to do one over here and we're going to thread on these little cone shaped beads. Okay. Just to bring the color down some more. So there's not a dead stop with the wire. And like I said, just to add some movement. So to do this, a lot of you have seen me do this before, but we're going to do it again. <laughs> so I'm grabbing a piece of wire. It's about four inches long. You don't need that much. I'm going to grab that wire right at the tip with the tip of my round nose pliers. Oops. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn the wire around the tip of the pliers. One revolution. You can see the very end of that wire. And then two times. Okay. You want to stop when you see that little tip of the copper core of that wire. Okay. Now I'm going to take it and bend the wire up out into space. Taking it off of the pliers, I've got the two little loops here. I'm going to take the tail end of this and I'm going to bend it back and push it through the hole of the, or the two holes of the wire. Now, this is this is 20 gauge wire. That's why I'm having it's it's a little bit thicker than what I normally use. I normally use 22 gauge for this, but it is important for you to see me do this technique with some other gauges of wire. 
um, because it can be done. So this is one step up from the 22 that I normally use. This is the 20 gauge, so it's a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. It's, it's a little bit harder to manipulate and maneuver, but you can do it, okay? So same thing, just like we would if we were using the 22 gauge. I'm gonna grab that wire right up against the two little coil, coils, <laughs> coil, coils, coils, whatever, you know. <laughs> My southern accent makes it impossible to say that word. All right, so now I'm gonna take another pair of pliers, I'm gonna grab that tail end with the wire and I'm gonna pull it through. Now, because this is a thicker gauge wire, you definitely wanna pull hard, okay? I've created my little head pin and now I'm gonna thread on my bead. So not only is that a handy tip, but it also makes it really easy to match the wires. Like you'd never be able to find a hematite colored head pin that was the exact same color as the hematite artistic wire. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. So to make your own head pin, that ensures that it's all gonna match. I like that, I like that a lot. So, <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna do a wire wrapped loop at the top. Okay, grabbing the wire, bending at 90 degrees. Just gonna kind of speed through this because you've seen me do it a bunch. Bringing in my round nose pliers. We're going up and over adjusting the grip to guide that wire on around. Now, one thing you might notice is that it definitely makes a larger knot, and that's okay, that's okay. I like to show off this wire, so I'm not mad at it. And then just wrap it around three times. I'm gonna take that off, and then I'm just gonna trim the tail. The thicker the gauge wire, obviously, the bigger the knot that you tie is gonna be, so always keep that in mind. If you don't care to show off the wire, then it's not gonna bother you. I love this wire, so I, I'm, I'm good with it. All right, same thing on the other one. We're just gonna do the same thing up and over. On around. Okay, switching hands. and then wrap it around three times. Oh, and be careful, don't crack your beads. All right, I'm gonna trim off. And now what we're gonna use to attach these is two six gauge, or six millimeter, not six gauge, my goodness, those would be huge, six millimeter jump rings. And I could have made, <clears throat> excuse me, I could have made my own jump rings out of the hematite wire and just kept it all uniform, but because our ear wire is going to be silver, it was important to me to bring that silver down into the bottom of the earring. So that part is totally up to you. I'm going to take a jump ring and I'm just going to open that up laterally and I'm going to thread that on to my spiral hooking through the center of the spiral, and then I'm just gonna thread on one of my little dangles. And close the jump ring back. Okay, so that's gonna hang nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side. Just gonna open up, thread that on, and then thread on one of our dangles and close it back. So now the only part of this that is left is the ear wire. And I normally don't make my ear wires on our project videos, but I'm gonna make it today because I had somebody ask me about it. So that's what we're gonna do. So here is our earring and we are ready to add an ear wire. Yes, <laughs> yes, we're gonna make the ear wires. <laughs> we're gonna do it. So remember this pack, our three pack, it's got that silver color in it. So let's make the ear wire. We're gonna do super, super simple ear wire. This is probably my very favorite ear wire to make. I do this all the time. So I've got a piece of that 20 gauge wire and I've got just a tiny bit of, this is way more than you will ever need. And I am going to use my small bell making pliers. Okay, I'm gonna use the small mandrel of the pliers to create the first loop. So I'm grabbing the wire right at the end and I'm just going to roll it to create that little loop thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with my big pliers, my big bell making pliers. 
Both, by the way, you can get over on jessiejamesbeads.com. If you don't have them, I use them for everything. Now, I'm going to place this into the jaw of the pliers right up against the loop, okay? And I'm going to use the large mandrel portion of the, of the pliers, okay? And I'm just going to, first I want to be sure that you guys are in focus. That's really important, okay? Hope you can see that. Okay, now I'm just going to take the wire and I'm going to guide it around the big barrel of the pliers. Okay, so that was like super easy. Now I'm going to take it off of the pliers and show you what it looks like. So this funny little shape going on. Okay, we're almost there. This is almost done. So now we're going to cut off the wire and to ensure that I always have the same amount so that I don't have to do two at a time. I like to come in with my cutter tool and make sure that I'm cutting right up against that loop, that first loop that I made. Okay, so that first loop is actually laying on the flat surface of my cutter tool. Okay, so you can ensure that every, every ear wire you make will be the exact same size. It'll have the exact same amount of wire, if that makes sense. Then I'm just going to pop that right off. Okay, now this is funny looking, so we're going to fix it because this is not what an ear wire looks like, right? So I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the very, very, very tip of the wire right there. And I'm just gonna give it the very slightest little bend, okay? Take it off of the pliers, and then I'm gonna take both ends and kind of open up the ear wire a bit, okay? So that it's nice and open, it's gonna fit through your earring hole. This is gonna be the little area where you attach it. But before I do anything else, you wanna put it on your block. And you do wanna tap it just a bit. And then there's one more step after this, okay? So just gonna kinda of tap on it, work hard in it, make sure that it's gonna keep its shape, okay? Now, last but not least, because this is very, very important. <laughs> this may be the most important thing you learn all day long. Please focus, please focus. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the very tip of the ear wire, right here, this little teeny tiny guy, I did cut it with a flush cutter. So it's a nice flush cut, which is really important, okay? If you're using just a regular cutter tool, you're gonna get that jagged edge. You wanna be sure that you're using a nice pair of flush cutters to create that flush, flat edge. But that's not enough for it. So what I recommend is you want to run your finger across it You'll, you'll be able to tell it's still kind of jaggedy. Even with that flush cut, you need to sand off the very tip of this. Two ways you can do that, okay? If you've got an emery board or a metal file, you just want to hit the very end of that with that file to make sure that you get all of the little burrs and little sticking up pieces of the metal off of there. Your customer will thank you for doing that because otherwise you can create um, an infection in your ear piercing quicker than you can turn around. A little teeny tiny piece of that metal, just a little tiny piece to come off and stick inside your ear piercing and you've got major problems. So do not skip that step. Use a metal file. I don't have a metal file, but I do have this guy. Um, if you've got one of these at home, definitely use this. So this was just a, um, a what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> this is a battery operated bead reamer. And I use this, you know, to ream my pearls, but I have an attachment that goes on the end of it that is a cup burr. That's what this little guy is. And he is specifically de designed, it's just a little cup. He's designed to fit right on the top of that wire and you just push the button and you want to go in a circular motion to really grind down the end of that wire to make sure that it's nice and rounded. Check it with your finger. Do it again. They also make these that are not battery operated. You just, you just twist it in your hand and that works just as well too. And I'm serious, a, a fingernail file is just as good as anything, okay? But don't skip that step. 
that is very important. All right, so we've made our ear wire. It was a really simple one, but it had that really important step at the end. Always take that into consideration when you're making your own ear wires. But you can see just how easy that was. I mean, we just whipped that guy up pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna come in with my pliers, open up laterally. Okay, that's super important. You don't wanna pull it out. And then I'm just gonna thread on my earring and close that back. And you have got a beautiful, unique pair of earrings that you made start to finish, even the ear wire you did yourself. Very avant-garde <laughs> piece, of, piece of jewelry. I, it would make a cool pendant as well if you didn't want to use it as earrings. But yeah, so, ta-da! <laughs> Those are our earrings for today. I hope you guys like them. I'm going to flip you around. I'm going to hold them up to my ear so you can see what they look like, okay? So, hello, hello. We're back to the flipping around thing again. So, all right, here is the earring. You can see this is a long earring. You can shorten this up by taking some of the, um, whoa, well, it would help if you could see it. <laughs> you can shorten this up just a little bit by taking out some of the beads if you wanted to. Um, you could replace these like cylinder shaped beads with the little, uh, rondelle beads instead and that would shorten up your earring so keep that in mind let me let me take this out look at this this is a jesse james bead too by the way one of my very favorite disco ball beads love 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 i've had those forever all right so i'm going to put this one in so you guys can see it i just think these are really really pretty on like just seeing them out it doesn't really do it justice until you have them on i think they're pretty cool I hope you guys think they're pretty cool too. I thought they were a fun pair of earrings. Um, I, I was super excited to use the new Swarovski and I love to use Swarovski in different kind of out there kind of ways because I feel like a lot of times people do the same things over and over again. So I thought this was cool. Just a really unique kind of twist on an earring and uh, using your Swarovski. So I appreciate you guys. First and foremost, I appreciate you for being so patient with me in the beginning <laughs> of this. It was definitely third time's a charm. Um, yeah, we'll, tr we'll try again next week and see how it goes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of worried now. But um, yeah, so it was a great time. Glad that you guys were here to join me. I will see you guys again here next week, 11 a.m., as always, on Thursday mornings. However... Should you have not gotten enough of me today, right? <laughs> there's, trust me, there's more. You can see me tonight at 6 p.m. Is it 6? It's either 6 or 6.30. I guess I better check. 6 or 6.30. I'll let you know for sure. I have so many of these, I, I kind of forget. They're all starting to run together. On the Silver, Silk, and More Facebook page, I will be doing a really cool, I'm doing another pair of earrings, as a matter of fact, and we're using some more of these Swarovski crystals, but we're using some Silver Silk. So if you would like to join me tonight, that's where I will be, and I will also be on Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook page tomorrow at 1 p.m. for an additional project for you guys, and we're using Dakota Stones from Jesse James Speeds. So, yeah. All right, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day, and I will see you guys later. Bye, guys. Thank you.